And if you want to safely test and verify patches and you have a physical standby database, then you can use the standby first apply. And release updates per se are always standby first patchable. So how does this work? I have my primary, I have my standby on the right side. They are both 1918 homes. So what do I do? Again, I start with, a, in my case, a fresh home, and I apply to that fresh home with Opatch Apply, the most recent release update, which in our example will be 1919 here. Once my home is 1919, it's very simple. I stop my standby and I relocate the service and it works with and without drug. And I started in managed recovery mode in the 1919 environment. Now I have the first assertion. I see if the redo apply runs successfully, if all goes fine. But this is just half of the cake. How about data patch? If I want to test data patch, whether it's running fine, giving me strange errors, or doing something very unexpected, I will convert my standby now into a snapshot standby. And please, no fear about snapshot standbys. It's such a bulletproof technology. It writes in the background a guaranteed restore point, and the redo shipping goes on. So in case of the very, very Murphy-driven event of you lose your production right now, you have to fail over in that situation to the standby. The only downside is that the failover may take a little bit longer because you may have received several gigabytes of redo, and the redo needs to be recovered before we can make the standby now available as a new production. But it's really a very safe way. And since a snapshot standby is a read-write standby, I can easily now run data patch repose on it. And once I'm good, I can go back into the redo transport. I convert my snapshot standby back to a physical standby. And then the redo will be consumed, which has been accumulated over the time I tested here. And all is good. So you don't lose the capability of disaster recovery or whatever. It's all good, all safe here. But if I want to use the standby now really for the patching, you see the standby is now 1919, but it has no data patch knowledge. What do I do? I exchange the roles. So I switch over to Prod2, which is my standby here. Then I stop my new standby, which was my production before, and start in a 1919 home as well, and enable redo transport. And then I run data patch for both now on the live instance because it's live, you can run it there. And so I had one switch over and all is good. So this would be a very safe, very productive way of using your standby environments for, first of all, the testing of patches, but second also for the patching itself. You don't save downtime with that. If you have a single instance, you need to bring it down. If you do it on production, or if you do it with the standby. Uh, there's no difference there. So you have that downtime here for the switch over or for stopping production in one home, bringing it up in another home. A patch, as I said before, must be marked as standby first installable. So please always check the readme and release updates generally are always standby first installable. Execute data patch then of course on the primary database. Whatever your primary is, so in my standby case, the primary is now the previous standby and there you will execute data patch. There may be a few restrictions. Please follow the guideline in this My Oracle support note.